Today, we talk about James Thompson. You probably thought that was the American holder of the very first Guinness World Record, where he managed to jump rope 10 times while holding three girls weighing 185 kilograms. But no, that's not at all what he's known for. Today, we discuss a powerful two-meter English MMA fighter who fought as a heavyweight, nicknamed the Colossus. Although he never became a champion, he gave MMA fans very spectacular fights. Let's remember together the highlights of Thompson's career. He was born in 1978 in Rockdale, England. Thompson's father was Neville Brown. He was raised by his mother. Since childhood, the boy had become seriously interested in sports. He was one of the best on the high school baseball team. He later became interested in bodybuilding, worked as a bouncer, and then used his formidable appearance to collect debts. James later became interested in wrestling and even participated in several competitions. Don Fry's MMA match played a big role in his development in mixed martial arts. The fight inspired Thompson, and he decided to concentrate on collaborating with the association. The boy began to watch the scrapbook and became interested in boxing and jiu-jitsu. In the future, James would meet his idol and would knock him out. He made his mixed martial arts debut at the professional level in January 2003, dropping his first opponent in the first round with a stifling forearm. Thompson continued his sports career by collaborating with the English promotion UC. Mark Goddard was among his first opponents. James won the match in Ultimate Combat 6, but the opponent contested the match. The rematch brought Thompson to the top after a knockout. Five subsequent victories helped the athlete to strengthen his authority. However, his first defeat was suffered at the hands of Georgian fighter Tengiz Tedarads. After that, the enthusiasm faded, but soon the Colossus returned to the ring again. In September 2004, James met in the octagon with legendary MMA veteran Dan Sever. Older than him by 20 years, the American began his career in the first UFC tournaments and was the former champion of this organization. The upcoming fight was the 83rd in Severn's professional career, and he was on a series of five consecutive wins. Would youth or experience win? Let's take a look. James immediately took the lead and skillfully defended from this passage to defeat. Dan, lying on his back, tried to lure the Englishman to the parterre, but Thompson was more comfortable in the counter. In one of these exchanges, Severn hit the right hook in the jaw, but the Colossus seemed to have missed his blow. After another exchange, where the veteran was more successful, the fighters clashed in the clinch. Gong separated the fighters. The second round started as well as the first round, where Thompson was pressuring and Severn snapped. Unexpectedly, the American led an attack with several hooks, and the Englishman later hit the right cross. In this style, the fighters fought until the end of the round. In the third round, James again works first and tries to break through Severn's defenses. Oh, 
There had been a few outbursts from the Englishmen, but Severn counterattacked well. In the fourth round, Thompson gained speed and immediately attacked intensively. Fleeing from the hail of blows, the American walked, but James was well protected from the pass. Once again, a foot in from Severn, but the Englishman was on top and even tried to sit in a full mount. Thompson stood up and tried to break the defense of the American fighter on his back, who was answering up kicks. The Englishman managed to land a full mount to the north, but the latter immediately turned the enemy and was in full guard. By the end of the round, the fight was held in the parterre, but there were few significant blows. In the fifth round, both fighters were already breathing heavily. The Colossus constantly went ahead and landed two consecutive accented jabs, after which the American fell. By the end of the round, there were several notches where the Englishman was more successful, but several times stumbled upon Dan's counter jab. Severn descended several times on the canvas of the octagon to drag James to the lower floor, but Thompson invited his opponent's dream gesture to the counter. At the end of the round, James still applied a full mount to the American, but did not make a meaningful impact. Thompson won by unanimous decision for constant pressure, domination, and more significant blows. So the Colossus defeated the legendary MMA veteran, who ended his career in 2012 with an impressive record of 101 and 19. After such brilliant victories, James became interested in one of the largest fighting organizations in Japan. His debut match in Pride, Thompson was unsuccessful. His rival was a Russian fighter with a strong base in combat sambo, Alexander Emelianenko. It was the sixth match of the Russian, and in only one he lost to the legendary Mirko Filipovich. James was very excited about this fight, and his emotions overwhelmed him. Everyone remembers his aggressive look in the ring at the opponent from Russia. It seemed that he would cut down Alexander immediately after the gong. And indeed, after the beginning of the round, Thompson rushed at his rival and knocked him off his feet. Rushing to finish, but Alexander quickly got up to his feet and met a powerful and rapid counterattack, landing blows with his hands. With a right hook, the Russian put James on the ring floor, and he jumped on him, but was again knocked out with two hooks. The referee prevented the Englishman from being killed and stopped the fight for 12 seconds. Thompson's unfortunate second defeat, from which he learned lessons and became more experienced. At Pride Bushido 8 in July 2005, Thompson faced American fighter Henry Centoriu Miller, who held a negative record of 1 and 2. James was rehabilitated after his defeat from the Russian, defeating Nikolai Silkinis at the local English tournament, but it was necessary to consolidate his status. Immediately after the gong, the Colossus ran at the opponent, but Henry walked into the core and tried to make a takedown. James defended well from the pass and threw a productive knee to the head from the clinch. Miller walked again, but the Englishman was on top and set into full mount. The American rolled over, but James did not lose his position and hit the back of his head. After an unsuccessful attempt at the armbar, Thompson was on his back. The American did not succeed in the parterre, but as he got up to the bar, he threw a good knee to the head. The change began in close combat, and the Colossus hit the right uppercut. Miller falls on the ring deck, and the referee stops the fight, preventing James from finishing off his opponent. A very dynamic and interesting fight that lasted just over a minute. Henry Miller finished his career in 2013 with a 6-16 six record. 
Thompson won the next two victories in his native England, both by knockout in the first round. After gaining experience and confidence, James went back to Japan for Pride 30 in the fall of 2005. His rival was 360-pound Romanian fighter Alexandru Lungu. It was the debut of this Romanian MMA fighter, nicknamed Sandu. Thompson had the honor of having Alexander baptized. And what did we want to see in the first few seconds of this battle? James swiftly attacked with a combination of crosses, and the Romanian dived under the blows, and with the strongest right hook, blew the Englishman onto the ring deck. Lungu ran off to finish, but the Englishman quickly recovered and blocked all blows. James was able to stand up, and the men made a change, with the result being the English fighter. It was evident that Alexandru was breathing heavily, and his significant right hooks were no longer as powerful as they were at first. Thompson threw several knees to the chest, and with a double hook, he turned the Romanian face towards the ropes. The Colossus struck a dozen blows to the Romanian's head from behind, and Lugu quickly tired and could not resist. At the beginning of the third minute of this first round, the referee stopped the beating. James had such a cool comeback and went on to win a series of five in a row. Yeah, and of course, yeah, yeah he's definitely a big guy. Uh, if he would have asked me why he was sat on top of me, <laughs> I would not like to say, but do you know what I mean, I came through it and it, it wasn't my best performance. I came out slow and um, I wanted to just kind of take it easy and not run into him. But even though I did that, I um, kept kind of coming forward and I, I got sloppy and I did get caught a few times, so I'm going to work on that. But all in all, you know. I won't deny so, it's not too bad. The next fight of this English Colossus also took place to the applause of Japanese fans at Pride Shockwave Tournament, the last day of 2005. Against him came this huge Brazilian, Paulo Silva, 7 feet 2 inches tall, weighing 385 pounds, certainly confirmed his nickname, Giant. Just after the gong, Thompson lunged at the Brazilian. Silva met the Englishman on the right, but almost fell out of the ring under a hail of blows. After the referee raced the fighters to the bar, James again ran at the giant, but the latter held a takedown and was found underneath. Thompson tried in every way to knock out Silva, and even these blows to the head were allowed in this organization. In the middle of the second minute, the Colossus knocked out by soccer kicks of this Brazilian fighter, who won his sixth consecutive knockout in the first round. Giant Silva participated in two more fights and ended his career with a negative record of 2-6. and six. Four months later, James Thompson again entered the ring under the banner of pride against local fighter Kazuyuki Fujita, nicknamed Ol Ironhead. This Japanese fighter was on a series of three consecutive victories, and many fans remember him as the first to land a knockdown on Fedor Emelianenko. Kazuyuki immediately started this round with the legs, but the Englishman twice defended himself perfectly. After an unsuccessful overhand from the Japanese fighter, again unsuccessful attempts at a passage to the feet, then the clinch control from James, and the treatment of the legs and body with knee bumps. Vegeta tries again to get through the legs, but the English fighter is well defended and throws a powerful knee, capturing the neck of the opponent. Clinch again, and James was more successful in the exchange. But Kazuyuki too harshly snapped over his right hand. Thompson pressed and pressed his opponent in the corner. Low kicks from the British fighter alternated with a change of arms. Then again a clinch, which was dominated by the Colossus and put a million effective knees on Kasuyuki. 
but the Japanese fighter endured everything. Vegeta pulled the opponent onto the parterre, but came from below and closed the guard. The Japanese fighter was able to nip the hands of the enemy, but still a few flew in passing. The fighters climbed up the bar and suddenly, Ole Ironhead hit the Englishman's jaw with two hooks and continued to shower a hail of uppercuts and hooks at different angles. After several dozen significant blows, Kazuyuki knocked out Thompson with a short right hook. At the ninth minute of the first round, the referee crossed his arms overhead. James drove the points, but the Japanese fighter managed to snatch the victory. After two losses in the same year, Thompson flew back to Japan to perform at the Pride Tournament on New Year's Eve in 2007. His opponent was again local fighter, Hidehiko Yoshida, who defeated such prominent fighters as Mark Hunt, David Abbott, and Don Fry. Thompson started the fight in his usual manner. He ran at the opponent with a knee kick off the jump, and the Japanese shot a counter middle kick. After a short clinch, Yoshida took the opponent to the parterre. From side control, the Japanese fighter made an attempt to reach the arm bar, and then a heel hook, but James was able to escape. After climbing in the stance, the Japanese fighter conducted an effective attack where the Englishman ate about a dozen significant blows to the head, but remained on his feet. There was a hand fight again, where Yoshida once again was more successful, but Thompson was also hit. Yoshida took a shot and found himself in a side position. The Japanese fighter tried to hold a Kimura, but a miracle and a roll helped James avoid pain. Once in position, Thompson launched an attack, kneeling several times and chopping the Japanese man down to the ring floor with a right hook. He tried to kick it, but almost got caught in a heel hook again. Almost falling out of the ring and just resting a bit, Yoshida again began to exchange with his fists where the Colossus dealt huge damage through powerful knees and hooks. Lying on the Japanese ring floor, Thompson sat in full mount and beat until the referee stopped the fight. This was a hard-fought, willful victory of the Englishman. An interesting fact is that Hidehiko Yoshida was defeated by his own pupil, Kazuhiro Nakamura, in a farewell match in 2010. James Thompson recovered just over a month before taking on 378-pound American fighter Eric Butterbean Ash. He came from professional boxing where he had a successful career despite his size. Eric re-entered the octagon cage in cage rage in his giant boxer shorts, painted like an American flag. Ash praised Thompson's formidable stare down when the referee explained the rules. James jerked the American's jab and then counterattacked with a combination of several hooks. After a couple of jabs and a low kick from Thompson, Eric Ash hit the right overhand and flew his opponent back with some quick hooks. James retreated and on the retreat received a powerful overhand from Butterbean. The Englishman fell and Ash struck him from above with a few blows to the head. The referee stopped the fight, but I think it was too early. Thompson certainly wasn't ready to admit defeat and he just sort of took a leg to fight and the fight was stopped. James was dissatisfied with the stoppage, as am I. A couple of months later, James entered the ring again, this time at Pride 34 against his teenage idol, Don Fry. The American MMA fighter was nicknamed The Predator, like Dan Severn, began his career at the first UFC tournaments and was a former champion of the organization. 
he defeated the likes of Ken Shamrock, David Tank Abbott, and Gilbert Ivell, and most importantly, he inspired Thompson to do mixed martial arts. James immediately, in an aggressive manner, ran at the American and came across the front kick and the left hook, which caused him to fall. After a brief time on the ground, the fighters clashed in the blade, where they tied up in hockey style. Suddenly, the Englishman walked into his legs and pulled a takedown, but Fry grabbed his neck in a guillotine. Thompson released the clutch and even sat in full mouth but only managed to strike one significant blow. The fight continued in the clinch and the Englishman launched several successful knee attacks. Fry threw it through his hip and went to the guillotine. The Colossus released from this capture, took back and began to shoot strong blows to the head of the opponent. Fry tried to get up and got a foot in the head in another series of punches. The Predator was already barely on his feet taking blows and did not even resist and the referee finally stopped the fight. It was strange that his seconds didn't throw in the towel earlier. As a sign of respect, Thompson kneeled before the idol and raised his hand as the winner. Fry just congratulated by Kevin Randall. Basically, I just wanted to say big thanks to Don Fry. He was very intimidated coming up uh, fighting with him tonight because he's my legend. He's uh, my MMA hero. I looked up to what got me into MMA. So to fight someone like that kind of really takes your breath away. And uh, I think he showed you why he's such a legend tonight. It was the last Pride tournament before being bought by the UFC. At the end of the Pride era, Thompson had a series of five consecutive defeats in different organizations. Let's remember the most spectacular of them. In July 2007, James appeared in England at the Cage Rage tournament against compatriot Neil Grove, nicknamed Goliath. It was only the third fight in Grove's career, and he was an undefeated fighter. After the gong, Grove began reconnaissance with forced jabs, but James had a pretty good attitude. Goliath hit two crosses and continues to go forward with swinging hooks, while James backs down and on the move catches the strongest right cross on the jaw. Thompson drops dead and probably doesn't feel the Grove kick to the head. At 10 seconds, this fight ends in favor of the opponent. Sad, but it happened. His next performance was in February of the following year, in America, at the Elite XC Street Certified, against undefeated American fighter Brett Rogers, with a record of 6-0. The round began with a quick attack by Thompson and a roll through the hip. The men immediately rose to the bar and clashed at the blade, where they both struck several significant blows. James got back on his feet and pulled a takedown, but the American got up immediately. Rogers performed a tie clinch and hits his knee in the jaw and immediately punches two hooks with shakes from the Englishman. The American throws another three clean hooks and in the third minute sends Thompson to a knockout. Brett Rogers went on to win a series of 10 fights and was first defeated by Fedor Emelianenko. At the organization's next tournament, in May 2008, Thompson faced street fighting star Kimbo Slice. It was Kimbo's third professional bout, and the American was undefeated. After the gong, the men immediately ran at each other. Kimbo took the opponent's back, but James immediately got up and took the takedown. Slice blocked all attempts to strike, and the men rose to the bar. 
their knees were exchanged in the blade and Thompson tried to hold a standing guillotine. Tibble pretended to tap to confuse the Englishman. The American then moved the opponent to the parterre and made an unsuccessful attempt towards the jaw. James wound up on top, and from the side control, he blocked one hand with his knee and applied several elbows. Kimball made a sweep and gave a couple elbows back to the Englishman. In the second round, the fighters exchanged jabs, and Thompson tried to get through the legs, but was stopped by a blow to the body. Kimbo was then hit by two cross-country runs and an uppercut, and James tried to escape with a passage through the legs, but was knee-deep in the American. After an unsuccessful guillotine attempt by Kimbo Slice, the referee raised the fighters to the stance. On this forced jab from Thompson, the American responded with two cross-countries and an uppercut, then a couple of accented jabs past the target. James was no longer on his feet and had eaten the American's combination with a precision uppercut and two hooks. Thompson pulled a takedown and ended up in the guillotine, but not for long. Kimbo on his back tried to avoid being hit by the Englishman, but James blocked one hand with his knee and applied more than 20 hard elbows to the head. It's not clear how the American fighter survived. On the last round, Thompson came out more tired, and Kimbo started with a powerful overhand to the temple. The Englishman tried to walk on his feet, but he got a strong hook to his ear, which started to bleed profusely. Then an uppercut, two crosses and a right hook, and all on the target. Thompson stormed, and the referee stopped the fight. James was incredibly unhappy with the stoppage, and slapped the referee. In July 2016, there was to be a rematch between Thompson and Slice in the main event the evening at the London Bellator Tournament. However, with just over a month to go, Slice died of cardiac arrest. On March 11, 2012, the Colossus came to India to fight in the main event of the evening with the large American fighter Bob Sapp. The American, known as the Beast, was on a series of five losses in a row and needed a win. James gained considerable weight and was the same size as his rival. The round began with an overhand and Thompson's move to the parterre. He first tried to develop his ground and pound out of side control, then Sapp swiped the enemy and applied several powerful hammer fists. James knocked the American down on his back and finally caught him. It turned out that he had twisted his leg and Thompson moved him to the parterre. In the fourth minute, Thompson defeated his opponent. Turned out Bob Sapp only had nine fights remaining and only won the last one. The Colossus, two months later, took another victory by unanimous decision in the same organization in its main event the evening over the American Bobby Lashley. In March 2014, he traveled to Northern Ireland to fight local fighter Colin Robinson. The round began with a blow to the groin from Thompson from the clinch. The next takedown was successful, and James from side control gave several significant elbows. Colin from the guard also answered with a few straight elbows and tried to wrap a triangle. Thompson tried to block his arm with his knee, and his opponent tried to reach the armbar. After an unsuccessful Kimura, the Englishman finished the round with several hammer fists. At the beginning of the second round, from the clinch, the fighters exchanged uppercuts and knees. And after the clinch, the fighters began to claw, and Robinson was brought down.
after James unsuccessfully attempted to develop his ground and pound. He found himself in an arm triangle choke, and the Irishman tapped. It was Robinson's last fight, and he ended his career with a negative record of 10 and 12. In 2014, a new stage began in James's sports biography. He received an offer from the representatives of Bellator. In his debut fight with Eric Prindle, the British man won by TKO. A repeatedly delayed match with Bobby Lashley took place in the fall of 2015. The opponent defeated Thompson with a technical knockout. After a brief hiatus, James faced Philip DeFries in 2017 and lost to a guillotine choke. During coronavirus in 2020, mass events were banned, so Thompson perfected his form and personal training while waiting for his next fight. By this point, the Warriors' age already suggested that his career finale was fastly approaching. But James is certainly not in a hurry to retire. If you watch this video without a subscription, sign up for the channel right now. Hit that like button and press the bell icon to avoid missing out on our next video. Take care.